At our school, we have Office 365 available to both faculty and to students. And it's a really helpful tool for me as an instructor, but more specifically, it helps me and my students to be able to connect a lot more. Since we've gone online, this has become even more important. And one of the things I've been doing a lot of is creating things that can be done asynchronously or synchronously. So I can do it in breakout rooms or it can be done with the whole class or they can be doing independently as well. And I use a lot of the different tools, but one of the tools I want to focus on for this video and then in a series of videos going forward is Microsoft Forms. And the reason why is because I want to spend a little bit of time unpacking what it is and then how I use that in the classroom and how it potentially could be useful to you as well. So let's start off with Microsoft Forms. What is it? How do I get to it? I'm going to do that whole overview in this video and then in the subsequent videos you'll be able to see specific tools and be able to find out more about each of those individual, for example, question types or things like that. So let's start off with Forms. How do we get there? Well, you log into your Office 365 um, and you, or Microsoft 365. I go to office.com and log in and then I have my different tools on the left hand side and one of them is Microsoft Forms. Forms. So you can click on that here and it will open up into this view that you're seeing right now. Now, I'm just going to mention that this is a change um, over the last little while and it used to open up into a new window where it was a different area and I'll show you that in a minute. This is the new one and from here you can create a new form or a new quiz and those are the two options you have for creating. You'll notice on mine it's giving me the warning that I'm close to my 200 forms limit so I want to just mention that there is a limit on the number of forms that you can create um, personal and group. We can talk more about those later but 200 is the limit for each of those. Um, so That means you're gonna have to kind of remove things some from time to time um, as need be. Uh, so how do I actually use it? I don't use this one and I'll tell you why in a moment um, and that is I actually go to forms.office.com and so it looks like this here. So here's forms.office.com and the reason why I do this instead of the other way is because I like, I have a lot of forms, obviously, and so I like to do a search within my forms, just the forms, not the entire um, OneDrive. So this allows me to limit my search just to my forms, which is very helpful. And it allows me access to the uh, recycle bin where I trash things and maybe accidentally trash something I can take it back out. So this is the area I go to. I normally have this bookmarked, forms.office.com. I log in, I'm here, I'm ready to go. I still have my option to new form and new quiz. So let's start off with what do we mean by form and quiz? Form is just gathering information. You put out questions, people respond, and you can collect that and get data from that. There's no interaction between you and the person who is submitting that information to you. Quizzes, on the other hand, allow for you to, be, to send back information. So a quiz is just like it sounds. You can create things where there's answers and it can even automatically mark for you. Um, and then you can also review things, add comments and feedback and type that up and they will be able to have access to it. In fact, they can go back and review what they've posted and see what your comments were to that. So I kind of like that for a lot of different reasons. And I often do this not just for quizzes, but I create things where there's no score on it, but it just allows me to be able to have some interaction on specific items back and forth. So let's start off with how do we create a form and how do we create a quiz. First thing you need to know is that if you start with a form, you have to end with a form. You can't convert it to a quiz and vice versa. So you have to be quite aware of what you are wanting to accomplish before you get started. I've made the mistake a number of times, so please learn from my mistakes. So what is the difference between form and quiz as far as what's available to it? Basically, they have the same type of questions and most of the same type of features to it. The only difference is that in a quiz, you can set correct answers and points. So I'm gonna actually just show you with a quiz because it's gonna encompass kind of both of them, but I'm gonna show you two examples in a moment. So I'm gonna go new quiz and with either form or a quiz, it's gonna say untitled form or untitled quiz and you can type in here and type in the name and the description for the whole quiz. You can later on add some information in your questions about each question, but this allows you to do a whole thing. Now with this you'll notice there's also a little green button here where I can insert an image. So I can create like a header image or put a little corner and I'll show you one like that in a moment. 
so I can actually do that. And from there, I can grab from Bing, search, OneDrive, like if I have uploaded to my OneDrive or upload from my computer. So there you go. Now, I can also add questions, and there's lots of different question types. And in future videos, I'm going to dig in more into all of these. So you'll have know what each of these are. Um, so each of these have a way that you can add a question to it. And then once you've added a question, um, you can then preview what it's going to look like. You hit the preview button, and this is what it would look like on a desktop or a laptop, and this is what it would be look like on a phone. So you can see what the students, and you can actually submit it to test it out yourself. So I can click this and hit submit, and then view results, because I have it set to allow to view results. That's another thing for quizzes allows you to be able to do. So I'm going to go back, I can go to my responses, and um, I can actually see the responses that are here. Sometimes you have to refresh the page in order to see it. It usually happens very quickly. But here you go, I can see the answers. I can click on more details and see that's my name because I was logged in. And I can review the answers now, and I can see what Nathan has done. I can even add a comment, general comment. I can add comments to them, whatever. I'll go more details about quizzes later, but you can see what kind of things you can get from that. And I can also save those as an Excel file. In a future video, I'll talk to you about how I can collect data and then I use it as a mail merge to be able to make it more readable. I do that with reflections. I do my students do reflections on there. You can create different themes. And I'm going to give a little tip here. Use colors. Color code what your different areas are. So if you have a particular class, you might color code it always pink, purple, green, light green, dark green, whatever that type of thing. Uh, you can put images behind it just to make it a little bit more interesting. These are the presets, but you can also add upload from your own image or a color scheme. So there you are. Those are themes. Um, and sometimes, in some of the themes, when, you, when you've when you actually already started putting the question, you put the title and all that stuff, the AI will figure that out and try and give you some themes that might match up to what your what your topic is. Then there's two other buttons. There's a share button, allowing you to share with anybody or only those within your organization. And then you can get a link, a QR code, embed code, or you can email directly from here. You also have two other links that you can get. One is sharing a template. I'm going to talk more about that in the future, but this is a great tool for me to be able to create something and then use it myself or share it with other teachers and allow them to be able to copy the actual form or quiz for themselves as a blank so that they can then start using it with their own students. And then you can also have people join in to collaborate, view, and edit. I have my students create forms quite a bit, and then they share them with me and share them with each other so that they can collect data, which helps with their academic writing. So that's the share. And then the last thing is the three dots. Three dots, there's two big things for me, the settings and the print form. I'm going to talk about print form in a second, just because you can see what it allows me to do is print off the results this way. I use this sometimes, but most of the time I use the Excel spreadsheet and I do mail merge. Another video. Then I use settings and in here I can have in a quiz I can have it turn off so it doesn't show the results right away. I can have it fill out the form anyone with the link or only specific people in my organization. I can record the name or not record the name. Do I want them to do it more than once or only once? Do I want them to be able to have access to it? Do I want to turn off access until it's ready? Start date, end date of when it's available. I can shuffle questions. I can even, if I have a certain setting within um, the quiz where I have different sections, it can show a progress bar. I can customize how I want the thank you at the end, and I can send a notification either to the person who filled it out or to me that somebody else has filled it out. All of those things are really handy, and I'll take in future videos how I set it up so that you know the kind of the best thing for you. The other thing in here is that you can also delete responses, wipe the thing, and use it again and print summaries and the print summary is kind of handy to get a quick overview of all the information that's there and you can create a summary link which you can share with uh, someone else so for example if you fill, have them fill out a form you can then create a summary link you can send off to your students to be able to see the results of what people have filled in that's it now let's show you an example of a form and a quiz really quickly here to so get an idea what it looks like this one here is a quiz so with the quiz you can see here each question um, we have things we can put things in order and with those I have it by points you can see this one has one point right here this one's marked as the correct answer I've have them allow them choose which question it is I did not turn on multiple answer or required but there's a lot of different things in here you can see 
and then this is what the responses would look like for the summaries for example um, here is going through all the different answers okay and just to show you what it would look like to the students this is what they would see for their quiz okay so that's a grammar quiz real basic you can see the average score the responses and if it's still active or not here is a form now with this form I have different things from text answers to multiple choice and even in multiple choice they can do an other I can see my responses here I can scroll down and see what different kind of responses I have and I can click within the responses and see here that this was an anonymous quiz it did not collect the information from them and they were asked if they wanted to submit it and they could so there it is you can see even up here here is where I used the image to show what the image looks like this one here I did not but there you go that's the basics of some forms and quizzes the steps are this is the overview watch for future videos where I dig in specifically to each different type of question and different type of features to allow you to expand and use this to the best of your ability and what is available to you